Thanks, Nicholas. Okay, so let's talk about public, private, and hybrid cloud, right? You hear these terminologies a lot. So what is a public cloud? We all know that public cloud is nothing but just another data center, okay? So this is managed by someone else like AWS or Azure. And what you do, you basically rent the space on that data center. You don't get to see the hardware, but you're consuming the service, you're deploying your applications, you're using the virtual machines or EC2 instances, and there are thousands and thousands of clients running on, on the public cloud, right? So it's a shared infrastructure. There are some security concerns, so we'll talk about them, for example, encryption, because in some cases, these cloud providers don't provide uh, encryption. So we'll, we'll take a look and then we'll tell you how Aviatrix is actually solving those issues. Then you have the on-prem DC. So like I said, the shift is going towards the public cloud, but you still have on-prem data center. Some companies, enterprises I work with, they are 100% in the cloud, so don't, they don't have any physical presence. But uh, the enterprises, uh, the large enterprises I see, they are uh, still running some data center footprint. Yeah, so it's a single client, obviously. It's one um, client, could be multiple tenants. Uh, it's highly secure because you are controlling and managing everything. So that's there. Uh, and then I see that um, people are now uh, moving towards private cloud. So what they do, they, they add some software defined layer on top of their on-prem DC and they try to mimic the public cloud and they call it private cloud, but it's not really giving them all the benefit that you get from the public cloud because yeah, you can automate the, the hardware, you can automate maybe the routing, for example, an SX can do that for you. You can just you know, deploy the virtual router and whatnot, but when it comes to services, you cannot compete with public cloud. For example, these services in the IoT space or in the container space or uh, DynamoDB, all those type of things, right? So yeah, so it's there. So I treat it still, you know, like a DC. I, although I call it private cloud here, but yeah, it's on prem, it's physical. All those characteristics you see here are applicable here as well. Hybrid cloud. Now this is the terminology. Uh, it's is getting obsolete now. Okay, so hybrid cloud, what happened that in the beginning, when uh, these cloud providers, they started offering their services, obviously for them, their cloud is the best cloud. See, so, so they don't want to use the, the word multi-cloud. That's why they coined this hybrid cloud uh, keyword saying if you have on-prem DC workload and if you want to connect to the public cloud, okay, that's called the hybrid cloud, right? So. Yeah, so, but that is an obsolete terminology. Uh, to me and to the industry, everything is multi-cloud. Okay, so that's important. So now when it comes to actually adopting the cloud, um, what is the journey or how does it actually look like for, for majority of the folks out there? So what happened that you have your on-prem DC, right? And then you adopted one public cloud and that's how you started. So that was like cloud 1.0, okay? Now, what I see is a shift where this guy, this on-prem DC is, is shrinking, as you can see. A lot and lot of people are actually moving their applications in the public cloud. And when they move application in the public cloud, they find that one cloud is better than other. Or there are some services that are available in one cloud, but not in the other. For example, Office 365 or AD, Active Directory, right? That Those are the services available in Azure. You will not find them in AWS, or if you find them, they're not as good as in Azure because obviously it's Microsoft, right? So there is a need for public cloud. Pretty much every organization I talk to, they have presence in, um, in multiple, multiple cloud, or at least they're thinking about it, right? So this is what is happening. This on-prem is actually going away and now people are moving into public cloud. So when you look at it, you should look at it from the strategy perspective. So even if you're present in one cloud, you should have a strategy for the multi-cloud network. Okay, so that's very important because multi-cloud is a strategy first and implementation later. Okay, so now let's talk about the networking in the public cloud. So these are the things you will see are pretty much common in every public cloud. 
So on the right hand side, you can see that when these cloud providers deploy their physical hardware, they pick a region, okay? And they pick a region based on the customer base mainly. And they say, okay, we're gonna build our data center here. And then within the region, they pick, a, pick an availability zone, right? So availability zone is a smaller uh, area within a large region. So a region could be Virginia, for example, or a Frankfurt. Within Frankfurt, they might have different AZs availability zones. And within each AZ, they have the actual physical data centers, right? So the idea is that to provide the high availability at the region level. So, so in case this data center goes down, you have the second data center in the same AZ. For some reason, if this whole AZ goes down, you still have another AZ taking care of the, uh, the rest of the load. And they try to do that with the low latency and then uh, all the, the power and cooling, dual power cooling and everything, right? Or if there is a catastrophic event, in case this region goes down, then obviously you have another region where you can shift your workload. So, so yeah, so these, uh, these definitions are important because we will be using it um, a lot in the coming slides. Um, so, yep, that's what it is. But at the end of the day, this is another data center. It's not yours. So like, the, like your data center, which was not perfect, this guy is not perfect. These things, these services, they do go down. They encounter issues. I can give you uh, examples. Uh, for example, here in America, in New York, there is a large media giant and their TGW went down for about six hours or seven hours, the AWS TGW, right? And it was very difficult time for them because they were not able to troubleshoot it because it's like a black box. Uh, so yeah, so you should expect those, those type of things. In uh, Portland here in Oregon, one of my customers, uh, they deployed VGW and VGW uh, started sending weird kind of routes. So they were having all kinds of problems, right? So that's why it's very important that you have visibility into those uh, services or into your architecture. So this is how it looks like. So when you look at the map and this map, you know, it keeps changing because uh, these providers, they keep adding uh, regions as they move or as they grow their business. So this is AWS. You can see their presence in different regions. If you look at um, Azure, yep, they have a similar kind of uh, footprint out there based on the, uh, the business requirement, right? And then Google, same story. So yeah, so they are deploying their data centers in number of locations. They are providing all the connectivity, all the fiber optics cable going back and forth between regions under the sea and whatnot, right? So, so they have taken care of that. So that's why it is very, very compelling and very attractive to the enterprises because now they don't have to worry about building those data centers. So those are done by these providers. Now they only need to worry about providing business value by deploying and adopting new applications and then providing new services to their clients. 